Hey, what's up guys? Hope you're doing well. And today I want to share a bit of a long-term review of the Wooting 60HE 60% keyboard. So I've been using this for the past five months ever since I initially reviewed it. And yeah, that initial review did kind of pop off quite a bit, to be honest. Three quarters of a million views is not really what I expected, but evidently a lot of you have bought the keyboard. A lot of you are actually now receiving it, which is really good to see. So I wanted to make a quick video just sharing my long-term thoughts on it, uh, my updated layout, which I'm using, and the physical mods that I've done with it. Now, if you haven't watched that full review, I'd definitely go back and watch that first because that will kind of get you up to speed on what we're actually talking about here. But if you just want the quick summary, this is the best gaming keyboard that you can buy at the moment. To start with, we've got those analog switches in here where you can set the custom actuation point between 0.1 millimeters and four millimeters. And you can do that per switch, which is just insane. And that alone makes this an unbelievable gaming keyboard. But then you've got a feature called rapid trigger where as soon as you start releasing the switch after a key press, it will just deactivate the switch. So normally you press the switch down and then as you're releasing it, you would have to wait for it to kind of pass the actuation point for it to be deactivated. Here, the moment that you start lifting that switch upwards, the switch turns off. This is an extremely useful feature for games like Valorant and CS, where counter strafing is one of the most important things in the game. Even in games like Apex and Overwatch, where you know changing direction and strafing is really, really important, the way that you can move on this keyboard is kind of unfair. It's these two things mainly that make the wording the most snappy and overpowered keyboard on the market. Everything that your brain is telling your fingertips to do is almost instantly converted to that action on the screen. Now, since moving into my new place, I have two setups, right? I have my gaming and editing setup and I have my kind of testing and benchmarking setup where occasionally I do need to actually like play games and benchmark some stuff. And whenever I use a regular gaming keyboard at that setup, I'm reminded of how crazy the Wooting 60 actually is. Gaming on a regular gaming keyboard for me, it just feels wrong. It feels kind of broken, like having to wait for a switch to pass through an actuation point for it to be deactivated. That just doesn't make sense in my brain now after using the Wooting 60. Something that amplifies this for sure for me as well is you know being surrounded by some of the fastest gaming monitors on the market and some of the fastest gaming mice on the market. It does feel weird now using a regular gaming keyboard that to be honest, can't really keep up. And then there's also the fact that you can modify the entire layout within a web browser. There's no need for software. There's no need to put the MCU in a flash mode, which you'd need to do for a custom keyboard, for example. And there's nothing running in the background. You just open up this web browser and you can start adjusting your layout, which is honestly one of the best things about this keyboard. There have been so many times where I've just wanted to quickly change something like raise or lower an actuation point, And it's been so nice not to have to download or boot up any software. Now I will have this entire profile code listed down below. So for those who have a Wooting 60, you can just copy and paste this code into your utility browser and it will import this entire layout, which by the way, is kind of optimized for esports FPS games because that's kind of what I mostly play. So of course, starting with that super important color scheme. Uh, it's pretty simple here. I don't like my RGB glowing all of the time. And so I've only got it set to light up when I actually press down the switches. And I think it's a pretty cool effect because the deeper you press the switch, the brighter the illumination gets. Now it's pretty subtle and you don't realize how cool this is at first, but this lighting effect is only possible with analog technology. You can't actually do this on a regular gaming keyboard. Let's talk about the important stuff though, the actuation points. And I think this is where most people will have different preferences with what they're comfortable with and also the different types of games that they're playing. This is primarily set up for first person shooters where you'll be strafing with WASD, for example. So what I've done here is I've set all of the switches to have an actuation point of 1.2 millimeters, except for the switches that I want to be more sensitive and a few others that I want to be less sensitive. Think of your directional keys that you might be really proficient with and you want those to feel extremely quick and as sensitive as possible. But then you might have those few keys that you might accidentally press like the Windows key or a 
tactical key, which I definitely do. So for me, I found around a 0.7 millimeter actuation point for those WASD keys to feel pretty much spot on. It's basically as sensitive as I can run them without accidentally tapping them or brushing them. And at 0.7 millimeters, it does feel pretty much instant. Now I've got to say with those directional inputs at 0.7 millimeter actuation combined with the rapid trigger, I mean, you were almost impossible to hit. Like the strafes that you can do in Overwatch 2 where the strafing is actually pretty snappy already, most of the time it just feels kind of broken and unfair. Then I've got a few keys which I only want to activate if I completely press them down, like my Windows key, my left Alt key, and the Escape key. The last thing that you want to be doing is Alt tabbing mid game, and at four millimeters, you basically never have to worry about doing that. And then there are a few other switches which I've just raised the actuation point over time because I find myself kind of fumbling them and just bumping them. The left shift key, for example, which would be like a slide for Sojourn. For some reason, I keep accidentally bumping this, so I raise the actuation point to two five millimeters. And then I also raised the tab key and the Q key, which I have bound to my ultimate. For the rapid trigger feature, I have that set to just 0.1 millimeters, which basically means that you only have to release the key 0.1 millimeters for it to be deactivated and reactivated. For FPS games, I definitely recommend having that set as fast as possible. Now the tachyon mode, otherwise known as the 1000 hertz mode, I actually have disabled because I'm currently using a custom coiled cable. I think due to the length of this cable and the overall resistance of the cable, it's not able to run the keyboard in this faster mode. I have been meaning to actually pick up a straight cable so I can enable the 1000 hertz mode, but it just hasn't been a massive priority to be honest. And the reason for that is, you know, the biggest factor in keyboard latency and input speed is you actually pressing and releasing the switches. They could be looking at inputs as slow as 100 to 200 milliseconds, even longer on other keyboards where you also need to wait for the switch to pass through an actuation point. That's the main reason why the wooding feels faster and is faster in real world use, even compared to 8000 hertz keyboards. Of course though, if you're running the default cable or another straight cable, there's no reason not to be using this tachyon mode to get that full 1000 hertz polling range. Now in terms of the physical customizations, which I think are definitely worth it if you kind of want a bit more of a premium feel, uh, what I've done here is actually pretty simple. I've taken the wooding PCB and I've thrown it in a 60% tofu aluminium case from KBD fans. This one here is dark gray, which actually looks pretty clean. And then I've also gone with a blank black set of keycaps from Enjoy PBT. I also spent an entire afternoon lubing all of the analog switches, which thankfully you only have to do once because it does take quite a long time. But yeah, I do think it does make a more premium sound especially when kind of combined with that metal case. So yeah, in the end, you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get the decent build quality, but then also with the best gaming internals on the market. Anyone who's picked up the Wooting 60, I can highly recommend doing this exact same thing if you kind of just want to dip your toes a little bit into that custom keyboard world. Also, massive shout out to Bad Seed Tech. I basically stole this idea from him, and he has a really great video on modding the Wooting if you want to take things a little bit further. But yeah, as far as like a long-term review goes, this has been a really positive experience it's one of those pieces of gear which i just don't see replacing ever and you know whatever's happening in like the custom keyboard world or the you know even the gaming keyboard world like corsair and you know some other brands which you know i don't want to name drop corsair but whatever they're doing i don't really care about because unless they can kind of match or beat the features that we have here on the wooding, there is just really no reason to switch. The analog switches here combined with that rapid trigger function, I mean, it just makes this thing feel broken in comparison to the majority of gaming keyboards in the market. And I still truly believe that even five months after using it. So if you wanna check out some of this stuff, I'll leave it linked down below. And of course, if you have a wooding 60, definitely check out that profile code, which I'll leave linked in the description. And that way you'll basically have the exact keyboard that I'm running here. Uh, as always, a huge thanks Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.